Hi everyone, I'm Jerry Penny, the Nurture Queen, and today we are talking all about customer retention, nurturing your customers' relationship marketing, and what are you doing to actually look after your customers. It's one of the number one things you need to be doing because increasing your customer retention rates by only 5% could increase your profits up to 95%. So get onto it and we'll see you soon. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the nature queen herself, Jerry. Jerry, how are you doing, my love? I'm great, Prosper. Thanks for having me. It's, um, it's a sunny day in Melbourne, finally. And I'm really excited to join you and talk to you about a bit of nature marketing today. Absolutely. Well, obviously, the audience run here are people that are, you know, building their businesses so that they are profitable and enjoyable. And as we all know, customers and customer retention is the lifeblood of any other business. And if you've got strategies in place to make sure that you've got repeat customers coming in, you're nurturing them, you are putting out content that engages them and builds, you know, a brand around your work, then you know you have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. But, you know, it's quite funny these days, even though there's a lot of technology, a lot of people are not really figuring out who their customer actually is or where that customer is coming from so they can get more of them. So that's the reason why the Nature Queen is here today so that we can, you know, open the curtain a little bit, although we're making the blinds in our house, but we will open the curtain um, a little bit so that we find out exactly um, what people should be doing in terms of customer service, relationship marketing, especially in the hospitality industry. Now, did I say any of that right there, Jerry? You said it all well and truly correct. Well done. Absolutely. Thank you. No, Jerry, I, I can just I can just leave the interview now, really, I think. You just <laughs> you've just covered it all. I don't have anything left to talk about. <laughs> Well, let's see. You probably have more uh, to offer and more value than that, um, you know, uh, inter I mean, uh, introduction that I just butchered there. Now, Jerry, tell me a little bit about um, your yourself, how you got started in this, um, you know, uh, relationship business and how did you become the nature queen? Yeah. So um, I, I started out with, a, you know, doing a PR and communications degree at, at Monash. And I, I stumbled into that because I, I wanted to become a chiropractor actually. And, you know, I've, I've always had a nurturing thing about me and I did not get the grades to get into chiropractic. And I was sitting there having a little cry over a champagne and saying to my friend, I don't know what to get into at uni. And she said, well, what do you love? And I said, I love Absolutely Fabulous, the TV show, if you ever remember that from the 90s. And I thought the lifestyle of Eddie and Pat's was just amazing. And besides all the cigarettes and everything, but, you know, all the champagne and everything. And she said, right, okay, you're doing PR at uni. And I said, Okay, so that's, that's how I got into it and I'm, I'm probably glad I did because it was probably my calling. Um, I'm a lot more creative than a chiropractor ever could have been, I think. And um, so I started working in corporate marketing and mostly for sort of membership associations. So, um, you know, it was always involved around member benefits and getting you know it's and that was all about customer retention too so you do anything and everything to get great deals and offer great services to the membership base to get them to stay as members and so I spent a lot of time managing uh, you know member benefits and things like that so um, when I ventured into small business ownership after having kids uh, it was just sort of a, a natural progression for me to to keep you know doing a bit of marketing consulting and and now you know it takes it takes a while to get super focused and realize what you want to do and you know I've sort of gone after different things different shiny objects and things like that and now I've a couple of years ago um, a digital marketer said oh you should call yourself the nurture queen and I said yeah I like that so I took it. 
hashtag the nurture queen. And, um, and from that, I've really focused on relationship marketing. Um, I got involved with a company called Send Out Cards and they, you know, they send out cards in the mail, um, chunky mail. You can send gifts and brownies and just, you know, it, it's a real physical card that you get in the mail. And I use that tool a lot for clients and uh, they use the term relationship marketing and I really love that term. I think it's, it's, it's fantastic and not enough people put the focus on the, the customer service and the relationship marketing in their business. So uh, I, I embraced that idea really and have created my business around the term of relationship and nurture marketing. And um, have I answered your question? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, I mean, obviously, th thank you so much, um, you know, for that backstory right there. Um, we all got to start from somewhere. And um, you started off with, um, like you said, you know, the, the whole corporate marketing and you were doing uh, customer retention in the term, in the, in the sense of membership. Is that something like uh, frequent flyer points or um, when somebody buys 10 coffees, then they get the, um, the 11 one free or is that, is that the sort of thing that you're talking about to make sure that people continuously come back to your, um, you know, to your location or to your place of business? Yeah, well, that's, that's certainly the kinds of things that any business can do today. I was um, working more in a... Um, professional associations and um, people that were running businesses, but they had a professional membership. Um, but absolutely, like, so d depending on whether you're a, a retail outlet or you're a small business, uh, like a sort of a service-based business or a products-based business or hospitality or something like that, there's so many ways that you can reward customers, thank them, um, let them know that they're you know, respected and, uh, and they're really appreciated as well. Appreciation marketing is the other term that gets used. And, uh, you know, you, you ask people how many, how many, I'll go to a networking group and I say, how many of you have actually thanked your customers this year? And about two hands go up out of 80 people. So, you know, it's just, it's not being done. They're not appreciating. They're not, they're not telling their customers how much they love and appreciate them. And I, I say to them, geez, you could just spend $5 a year on a client, sending them a card or something like that. And, you know, you just don't know what that's going to do for you and how it's going to make them feel. And um, you, you just don't know. Like the referrals that you could be getting from that kind of thing is incredible. And one of the biggest things you want is to get referrals in your business because it's one of the highest forms of a compliment is to get a referral from someone else. Absolutely. So. Um, yeah, so I, I um, really put the emphasis on um, people trying to retain customers and, you know, because it costs about 10 times more to attract new customers in a marketing spend than it does to retain a customer. So, you know, you might as well put some real effort into, um, into retention then you know, you still have to put the effort into to getting new customers as well. But when you put the real effort into retention, you're going to get more new customers from repeat business, um, upsells and referrals as well. Absolutely. So obviously, like you said, it does cost a whole lot more to, you know, reach out to a new customer than it is to get somebody who's already, um, you know, experienced your products or services. And also, as we know, people do business with those they know, like, and trust. So what sort of process do you take your customers through, um, you know, when somebody reaches out to you and says, okay, I really need to make sure that I, I decrease my marketing spend by maintaining um, the customers that I already have. What, what, walk us through your strategy that you take your customers through, um, you know, so that you can help them, um, you know, get more of their marketing spend through your work. Yeah. Yeah, so the first one of the first things I do is um, you know run them through a niching discovery session. So we uh, really identify that you are marketing to your exact target audience that you want because you know if you market to everyone, you might as well market to no one. You need to have a really concise message 
um, to the exact target audience that you want to attract into your business. And um, so we do a niche discovery session and we really delve deep into the avatar of your ideal client. And um, when people say to me, I say, who's your ideal client? And they say, oh, everyone or anyone with skin. I'm, I'm like, burnt, no, nah. <laughs> stop, stop right there. <laughs> Even everyone, if someone is not, says, everyone is not your customer. Even if someone says to me, I just want women. I'm like, no, seriously, we can break that down about 10 more steps. We just keep breaking it down and breaking it down. And, um, and they're like, but that'll limit me. That'll limit my business. It will make me smaller. And no, it actually doesn't. It, it can make you a lot bigger. You can, uh, you're more likely to be seen as an expert in your industry when you're really highly niched and, um, you know, you can charge more for your services. So I, I've got this example of a, um, a website guy. He was based in the UK, one of a million website guys out there probably. And he was really, really struggling. And someone said to him, you need to niche. And um, they said, you know, what do you like to do? Because your niche should um, stem from your, from your interests and your passions and what you're good at. You know, you shouldn't niche in dog products if you hate dogs, you know. Um, so he said, look, I, I've got this thing about dentists. I've done this website for a dentist and it went really well. And I understood all the legal jargon that I was allowed to say, you know, there's all these things you can and can't say. And so he started really refining his pitch and his product to just offer fantastic websites for dentists. And now he's making an absolute killing because, um, because he is just known as the dentist website guy, you know, and every dentist in England goes to him to get a website and he charges an absolute premium for it because they know the going to get a you know top-notch product of someone that knows exactly what you can and can't say being a dentist basically so you know he, you could niche that even further you could just do orthodontics or something but um you know that's just one example of someone that was scared of niching and um but he wasn't getting anywhere and and now he's just chosen one silo to focus on and you know, just killing it out there, basically. Absolutely. Great. So once you've figured out who the people are and then you niche down, um, all you now got to do is make sure you provide them with the right kind of content so that you nurture them, right? Is that then how it then works out? Yeah, that's right. So, you know, and there's nothing wrong with having a couple of different niches. You know, you, you could specialize in this area and that area. Um, but as long as your marketing is just talking to the guy that's in his 30s that still lives with his parents and he's got a dog, you know, and the message is very different to the, the woman that's in her 30s still lives with her parents and has a cat, you know, if they're your two absolute ideal customers. There's nothing wrong with having two or three as long as your messaging to them exactly talks to them. And the great thing about digital marketing these days is you can be as targeted as you want. Um, you know, gone are the days of just putting your ad in the yellow pages or putting up a billboard or, um, you know, even I, I'm still amazed at how much advertising there is on radio because, um, you know, you hear an, an ad on the radio for a, a private school out in the far eastern suburbs, but that's getting broadcast to the far west. It's, what's the point? That's just a waste of money. Why aren't you doing some local advertising? So, um, you know, our, the world is our oyster at the moment for the, the forms of different advertising that we can do, and it's so cheap now too. Um, just even like remarketing, you know, you can, you can get to a thousand people for $2. It's, it's crazy spend. So, um, and it's so, so targeted, you know, you don't, you don't have to worry about, is this my ideal client that I'm spending my advertising dollars on? Because it is, you know, it just, it's, they're there and they, you know who they are. It's, it's a scary digital world. Unfortunately, Facebook and Google knows everything that we do. They know where we go and they know what we eat. They know how much we earn. Um, they, you know, I look at my phone and it says to me, oh, it'll take you 10 minutes to drive to Bentley today. I'm like, how does it know I'm going to Bentley? It just does. Because <laughs> it's a smartphone. 
Great stuff. Now, obviously, nurturing is, is a two-way street, all right? Um, as uh, people in hospitality, they are also going to be needing constant uh, supply of fresh foods, constant supply of fresh ingredients and, and the like like that. But for you to maintain those relationships, there's got to be some sort of a way that, you know, you can help your clients with that um aspect do you also help businesses connect with their customer with their with their client with their suppliers and people that actually want to do business with them is that part of the work that you do as well yeah well one of the uh things that i do that i take people through is a referral marketing process so you've got your referral marketing wheel and um you look at who are the types of businesses that have the same target market that I do and we've got the same kinds of values and how could we refer work to each other so one of those categories comes into suppliers definitely um, so you know it's yeah you've got to look after your suppliers just as much as um, your customers because you want them to keep supplying you with fantastic produce there's a there's a, a restaurant at at Crown, I think, and he gets all the best T-bones in Melbourne. You know, the, the butcher will not let any other 100% top-notch T-bones go to anywhere else except for this restaurant, you know. So it, you really do have to have a great uh, network of suppliers and obviously you've got to treat them right, you know, pay them on time and everything like that and look after them because if you don't have great suppliers for your restaurant or your, your cafe, then you know you're not going to be able to supply a great product to your customers so um and it's all just a good it's just good karma for your business you know treat your suppliers just as good even though you're paying them but you need to treat them just as just as good as your customers absolutely you don't want to um, annoy a supplier that's for sure <laughs> Great stuff. So you did mention, you know, obviously most of the stuff that you do is within the relate relationship marketing realm. And, um, you know, what, what, what if I wouldn't really want to engage someone and I really want to make it really personal and, you know, write out the cards by myself or write out the, um, you know, letters out by myself and make it really authentic to me. Is there any, um, you know, DIY stuff or tools that you can recommend that people can uh, utilize? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, send out cards is a perfect example of that. Even though you do it all online, uh, you just upload a database and you can even have your own handwriting scanned in and you can just go, dear Bob, dear Sally, dear this, dear whoever. And you could even have another little bit of personalization in it. Um, so that actually, even though it is essentially, you can do it like a mail merge, you can do one offs or you can do a mail merge type thing. Um, it, it still feels totally person, personalized basically. Um, but there's nothing to stop you doing all sorts of, you know, just little handwritten things. Um, I, I read this great article the other day about, you know, how to get customers, uh, back into your restaurant more than three times because, um, once they've been in three times, they're more likely to become a regular. And so his tip was, um, when they're a first time customer, they get a red napkin or something, something that makes them stand out to all of the staff. And they know that um, this is a first time customer and boy, do we have to treat them well. And, you know, they might have come in on a deal like a, you know, a, a free, a free meal or something like that. And then his, his thing was to get you back for the second time was, how did you like the ribs? Oh, they were fantastic. Well, you've got to try our chicken. Here, his, um, and he hand signs a little business card, come back in and get 50% off the chicken next time you come in. And so they've gotten something personal. And then the next time they come back in, that coupon sits there on the desk, um, on, the, on the table while they're eating. And that says, says to everyone, they're in here for visit number two. I've got to make this really special because we need to get them back a third time. So at the end of visit number two, he says, Next time you come in, you've got to try, um, come in for a free dessert or whatever it is, you know. And so, again, they give them something that um, lets them redeem that free dessert when they come back for the third time. And, again, it's just another uh, indication to all the staff, this is a third-time visitor now. 
um, this is the end of the deals, but we need to still treat them really great. And um, hopefully you've captured their details. You've got their email address. You've got their phone number. You've got their birthday. You've got their anniversary, things like that. You've joined them into your VIP club um, because you've got them hooked now basically and once you've got them in the fourth time they are likely become raving fans and that's what you want absolutely well um i'm not sure if you're familiar with uh dale carnegie um how to influence friends and win people because yeah. what he says yeah. is anybody's name is like music is the best thing that they can ever hear. So by you treating them like that and recognizing, you know, that they had ribs, by you treating them like that and, and recognizing that, you know, you know, recognizing stuff about them, it means you've been paying attention and people like that, especially these days, you know, with um, uh, instant gratification and also the relationship marketing that you're talking about. And I also remember there was um, an episode on the Gary Vee show with John Tafer. I think he's one of the biggest restaurant guys. He would be the one that came up with that idea um, that you're talking about. So I think it was a Gary V article or something. Yeah, it rings yes. a bell. <laughs> it would have been John Tafer, exactly. Oh, John yeah. Tafer. Yeah. Right. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm really. And, and thinking about the, um, you know, learning your customers' names, one of my clients is a, um, a gluten free bakery. And, you know, they obviously have a very niched client and right. a really good following. And people will come from afar to come and visit them. Um, but they, they have their coffee loyalty cards um, pinned up on a pin board on the side of the, the shop. And first of all, it shows you how many customers they have. Like there's so, so many cards up there. But your name is there and it's in a rough alphabetical order because it's the way for them to learn your name and, your, and they get to know your name, your coffee, everything like that. And they... They tick it off on the wall every time you're in there. So you don't have to remember to bring your card in. They're doing that hard work for you. And they're learning your name and your coffee order. So it's a really great system and um, really makes it seem like it's a, it's a little local community just on this pin board of, wow, look at all these coffee drinkers, you know. It's a really yes. great system they've got. Absolutely. I'll just take it back a little bit. You know, when I was growing up, we had a room uh, in the house that was designated to be the computer room. So that's where dad would go into work. That where, that's where mom would pay the bills in. Everybody else would go into that computer, use that one particular computer, and everybody else used it, right? And then you take turns. Uh, you know, to jump on it, and well, I always just play games on there. But then, you know, um, fast forward to today, where everybody's holding their own piece of computer in front of them. So, normally, if a message would have come on that home computer, even if it wasn't personalized, nobody would know who it was for. But today, if you're going to be sending me a message on my phone, it has to be personalized. You should know who I am, what my daughter's name is, and what I had for dinner last night. So I can imagine what people are actually anticipating when they walk into a restaurant these days because everything else has become so personalized. So obviously that's where, you know, it really, really integrates with what you're doing and what you're saying and how it's actually helping businesses get really, really close to their customers there. Now, Jerry, obviously, um, you know, you, you've dropped in a lot of value in this show today. Um, how can people get a hold of you so that they can learn a little bit more um, of what you do and maybe, you know, consult with you and eventually maybe become customers? Yeah. Um, well, they can connect with me on Facebook or LinkedIn. Uh, just look for Jerry Penny. That's Jerry with a J, like Jerry Seinfeld. And um, I'm my... At tag on Facebook is the Nurture Queen, um, and on Instagram I'm Jerry Penny Nurture Queen, and you just look for the hashtag the Nurture Queen or whatever you want, you'll find me. Um, you know, Prosper, you just found me on LinkedIn, so I'm, I'm findable. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I don't think there's any other Jerry Pennies out there. No. Um, and I, my web, yeah, my website is thecalmgroup.com.au. So even though I call myself the Nurture Queen, Calm is all about customer appreciation and relationship marketing. It's a bit of a, a bit of a geeky name, and that's why I call myself the Nurture Queen. Um, 
you know, just, you can just call me your Royal Highness or whatever you want. Just, I don't, I'm going to get a crown, I think. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I can't thank you enough for your time, your Royal Highness. <laughs> <laughs> for having dropped in this much value for us. So we're almost getting into uh, 2018. And um, is there any sort of marketing predictions you might have, you know, within your industry that you think people should be on the lookout for or any sort of advice for, you know, people as they enter into a new year, what to look out for, what and what not to do? Just some parting words from... Um, um, just, you know... Social media is not going anywhere. Facebook is not going anywhere. If you think that your client is not on Facebook, you're dreaming because there's about 2 billion users at the moment. It's going to be four, I think, very soon. Um, so make sure that you're getting, um, getting on board and getting, getting social, that's for sure. Um, really keep up your content marketing and uh, giving value. Use the 80-20 rule so you're only... Um, you know, 80% is added value or fun stuff or free stuff all the time and only 20% sales-ish. Um, and I'll just leave you with one stat um, that, you know, increasing customer retention rates by only 5% on average increases profits anywhere from 25 to 95%. So just um, remember that one. We don't have to do a whole lot of homework in the customer retention area, but the profits can go through the roof. Absolutely. Well, the goal for every person that's in business is to, first of all, uh, gain customers and earn a profit off of them. But like you say, we've got to create for and relate to them in order for, for us to retain them. And as you say, social media is not going anywhere. Um, we got to have to, you know, brace up and actually you know go full throttle and make sure we're reaching our customers where they are like the example you gave a little bit earlier on about the college that is advertising to people that have nothing to do with them so you don't want to be spending advertising dollars on people that don't care much about your product you want to make sure you're not spraying and praying with your advertising you're actually reaching people that care about what you've got to say now Miss, um, uh, your highness, Jerry, <laughs> I cannot thank you enough for your time, your wisdom and the value that you dropped on this show today. Thank you so much. Hey, uh, prosper, live, live, live long and prosper. Hey, absolutely. Thank you so my, much for your time. My kids are always asking me how to do this. I'm like, oh, it's, it's skill. It's years and years of practice to be able to do that. <laughs> 34 years if you ask me. So yeah. <laughs> 30, 39 for me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.